What's going on everybody and welcome to part three of our Python fundamentals that aren't basics tutorial series. In this video, we're gonna be talking about arg parse for making CLIs or command line interfaces. So first of all, why might you actually wanna make a command line interface? So to some degree it can make like interacting with your own program a little easier. You know, you can just call it from the command line and you can change variables, just dash dash variable name equals and boom, it's changed. You don't have to open and edit the file and all that. So it can be kind of like, it can be quicker to tweak things and rerun it really quickly. Also, I think command line interfaces are exceptionally useful for anytime you're gonna set up something like a cron job or something like that, that you wanna maybe tweak that uh, some sort of variable, but also run the script via the system. So maybe a cron job, or maybe even you're you're running an os.system call in your script or something, you know, and you want to change a variable or do something. Uh, having your program be and have CLI options is useful. So let's go ahead and cover them. So for now, we've got this really basic function. It just calculates X and Y and does some sort of operation. So the, if the operation is add, it adds them and so on. Obvious, actually, never mind. We'll talk about it later. But, you know, these methods and stuff, if you were going to actually make a, a function like this, you wouldn't, you wouldn't write this. But anyway, uh, so what we're going to do is, is convert this into a command line interface using arg parse. Uh, also, you don't have to write up this entire function. Some of you are probably like, oh my gosh. Now you can go to the text-based version of this tutorial and uh, copy this code. I'll either link to the tutorial in the description or copy and paste the code into the description or both, or who knows, the video's not out yet. So I don't know, we'll see, it'll be a surprise. So, so let's convert this to a command line interface. So the first thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna import argparse and we're gonna import sys. So then we're gonna do define main, and then main is where we're gonna actually build the arguments themselves. As you might guess from the name argparse, it's an argument parser. Surprise! So what we're gonna do is we're gonna define the parser, and the parser is equal to argparse dot uh, argument parser. One quick note on um, pep8. <clears throat> when I see the following arg parser argument parser, I am I can assume argument parser is a class and parser equals is an object of that argument parser class. How do I know? Because of the studly case. Again, that's just that's one reason why you want to sometimes adhere to pep8 because it's clear to me immediately when I know like that's the name of that. Okay, it's a parser object. It's not some sort of function that's returning some sort of value that we're calling parser. Moving along, uh, parser dot add argument, add argument again, because we know parser is an object, we know add arguments a method. If that doesn't make much sense to you right now, it will soon because we're gonna be talking about object oriented programming soon. Moving along, uh, the first argument we'll add is just dash dash x. That's gonna take the place of this x parameter. So that's the name of it. The type we're gonna say is a float. Uh, then we're gonna say default equals 1.0, and then we're gonna come down and we're gonna add um, some help. And the help is just uh, like a, some sort of string that's gonna explain what this is. So we're just gonna say, what is the first number? And I'm just gonna copy this and paste and paste. And the second parameter or argument will be y. It's not the first, it's the second number. We'll stay, stick with the default one. Uh, and then the final one is operation. The type is not float, it's a string. And then we're gonna say um, what operation to, um, let's just put parentheses, add sub mul or div, okay? Um, I'll show you how help can be utilized uh, soon. So those are the arguments. Now we're going to say the args is equal to parser dot parse the args. And then um, we're just going to sys dot s standard output dot write the string version of calc args. Okay. So this is all necessary to do with arg parse. And then the system out 
the reason why we're doing this is um, so the output will actually come to the to the console itself. Um, in many cases, you could just use print, uh, but there's going to be times when actually you need to do a system out because uh, otherwise you're just not going to see it. Anyway, so then we're going to output it. Now you can see that actually, rather than passing x y operation, we're passing r. We're just passing args. That's it. So as you might guess, we actually need to change this now is args. Then you could either do oper operation um, equals args dot operation and then do that for x and y. I wouldn't recommend getting the habit of doing that because basically you're, you're like, you're, do you're, you're multiplying that variable, whatever the contents of that variable are, boom, they just got doubled. Um, and also I didn't really fully explain in the last tutorial, but with like string formatting and concatenation, when you use the plus sign to add things together, you're making multiple copies of that, that string, whatever it is. That's why it doesn't scale very well, especially if you were doing like a large concatenation process, uh, that would not be um, favorable. Anyway, um, we're not gonna use this. You could use this. Uh, it might make the function more readable. I don't think it does, but you might. And if you disagree, feel free. It's not that big of a deal. So instead, I'm actually just gonna put args dot in front of everything. Boom, boom. Okay. So that's all we need to do there. Now, pretty much, I think we're done actually. So we're gonna save that and I'm gonna pull up a um, command window. It's not very big. Let's see if I can edit this really quick. I think I do it in properties. Huge. All right. So now we're going to actually run this. In most cases, you can probably just type Python. That'll work for you. I've got multiple versions of Python, so I'm going to specify I want uh, Python 35 or 3.5 and then Python. Uh, and then I'm running 3 dot capital A. Really? I'm pretty sure that's what it's called. Okay, cool. We'll go with that. I don't know why three dot space capital A did not work, but that's fine. So let's just run it once without doing anything. Up oh, calc. Oh, we're still calling though. Oh my gosh. Come on. Okay, so actually at the very end, we forgot something pretty important. Also, let's do this. Pep8 specifies one white space between functions, two between classes. So we'll honor that while I'm thinking about it. If name equals main. Always a good idea. This just basically ensures that if this is the actual script that's being run, we run this function. Otherwise, we don't run it. So if we were to import this for whatever reason, it wouldn't just run. Okay, say that. Uh, our, I, think we're, I think we're ready to rumble now. Let's try again. Uh, this time we get none. That's not what I wanted. I want the output of the args default is yes ours why did you give me none oh the default for the operation uh we need to make that something we'll we'll do add for now seriously did i not okay we got rid of the comma we'll get there we'll get there we're on our way boom successful like eight times a charm good stuff so 2.0 that's the default Awesome, but what we can start to do instead is say dash dash x equals five dash dash y equals two, and then the operation operation equals um, we'll say mole for multiply, and we get 10.0 instead. Pretty cool. We can also do dash h, just a single dash. And what we get is basically the help output. So it just tells us basically, you know, what we're trying to run, what our various options are. So we know that dash dash X corresponds to X and Y and then operation. And then we've got optional arguments here for H and help. This would just show basically the help message. Um, and then we've got the, the parameters that we added or the arguments that we added. Okay. So that's about all I want to show with argparse. It's just a nice, clean way to parse arguments as opposed to using like 
sys for getting your arguments, because you can do that. You can get arguments from the command line using actually just sys. Um, but it's one, it, it's going to be required that you do that <laughs> and you do all of the arguments that you're expecting. Uh, well, I guess you, you could make a function and get around it, but the, the sys module is going to want that of you. It's going to want something for all those arguments, but I guess we, we've made defaults, so I suppose it's the same thing. But anyways, arg parse is just a much more friendly way to, to parse arguments from the command line than to use sys. The only reason we've got sys here is just to output from, um, from the function. So that's all for arg parse. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, whatever, feel free to leave them below. Otherwise, in the next tutorial, we're going to be talking about list comprehension and generators. So stay tuned for that. Thanks for watching.